Uh, I am Philip Richardson, now Clapham. I got married over the course of the year. Woo! Yeah. Uh, so uh, my community was, uh, I focused on HIV communities, um, particularly one here in New York City called Impact NYC. The T is intentionally a plus sign. Uh, and what they focused on was bringing together HIV positive men in the city to do uh, social things, right? So. Uh, the point was that they had uh, lots of uh, resources that uh, lent, uh, that you know uh, helped them with their um, their clinical needs, right? So they had doctors and s medical services, they had um, uh, mental health services. But what they really thought they were lacking was uh, a space to come out, let loose, share, you know, have a drink, and um, really sort of like share their experiences um, and without stigma as HIV positive men. Uh, what I found when I was sort of inhabiting their spaces was that uh, there was an information exchange that was happening. So I talked with Michael Hager, he's their uh, executive director, and he sort of confirmed this for me. He says that yes, uh, in addition to drinks and music, and yes, a little sex, they're always looking for a little sex and intimacy. <laughs> um, <laughs> <sighs> that services was something that were very important. So, you know, a lot of people who are new to New York City uh, may, n may not know how to navigate uh, uh, getting medicine or finding affordable housing. And oftentimes you found that in these spaces, that sort of information was exchanged over drinks. Um, among, talking with them and engaging them on their social platforms uh, and in person on their, at, at their mixers um, and excursions, uh, what we found was that stigma dating were, uh, were all the sort of the, uh, discord, uh, disclosure were all sort of the issues at hand for them, right? So they liked coming out to the groups because if they met someone or engaged with them, it was sort of a, a given that they uh, were also living with HIV. So uh, it sort of helped them to uh, overcome a hump that you usually find in uh, gay spaces at large, social spaces. Um, so we followed up on this, right? So I uh, did a couple of interviews with some of the members, and this is uh, what Cameron had to say. He's really cool. He's a, he's a former lawyer from Boston who moved here to become an actor at the tender age of 45. But he sort of confirmed that what they had, at this, what was special about this community was that it was not just therapy-based. It was not just sitting around and sort of woe is me and talking about how you, uh, you know, came to the situation. It was, this is much more like a living and a celebration of life. Uh, so and so we did, I dug deep into some like recent uh, CDC numbers and some uh, qualitative research that had been done on what stigma means for folks living with HIV. Uh, and it was obvious, right? There's this rift within the gay community between those who are dateable and those who aren't. Um, oftentimes in all of the spaces, not just in physical spaces, but online and dating apps, uh, people living with HIV are, are uh, harshly sort of uh, declined. Um, older men too sort of feel like they're the lowest rung in the hierarchy where they're not young and nobody really wants them, nobody wants to talk to them when they're out and that's actually something that it, with impact they found uh, was the case socially. Uh, we did several um, surveys with them. They're on a, they have a, a secret Facebook book group page that only members can be a part of and share their content so it's safe for them that way. But over and over again we heard that the older men felt this uh, uh, the separation from the younger ones. Um, and also too, there was issues with like emotional health and, and uh, the, the effects of HIV medication on their bodies. So I realized that it was not gonna be an outward facing per se sort of journey for me. It was much more internal. Um, and so we did some surveys, 89% of them said that what was most important aside from getting information about where they could find services is really sort of bonding with other community, uh, other community members and having much more, more, more events. So we built on that. Um, this was one sort of like outing that they had that I went and we did an audiovisual slideshow in Meredith's class. How do I play? Use the mouse. Okay. I think I saw somebody make a post about it on Facebook or something like that. And I figured, you know, if you're new in the city, you know, have HIV, it's always good to make connections with people who are similarly afflicted and socialize and stuff like that. I went to a support group a couple times. 
a few weeks I went, all you just heard was the sob stories about how they became infected and how their life is right now and stuff like that. So I stopped going. This isn't anything like that. This is a social group. You go to some bars and you you know you want to meet somebody. And you're like, mm, you know, well, how much do I want to tell them? I mean, I'm always honest about it and stuff like that. But of course. And the, uh, I think the best thing about going there is, you know, everybody's in the same situation. There's no guessing or anything like that. I've added tons of people to the group. I think there's a lot of good camaraderie. You know, I'm a social butterfly now. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know. And boy, can I talk if I start talking. If I'm not, if I'm not on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a great group of people. You should invite your professor some night. We'll buy her drinks. I think she would like it. I think she would. I'll certainly put the invite out. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. All right. Right, so, and you notice, like, it was, it was obviously dark because it was a nightclub, but uh, what I found in trying to document them and what was reflected in the, in the Facebook group was that anonymity was something very uh, personal to them. Like, each person has their own uh, varying degrees of outness when it comes to their status. And so going in and just, like, snapping a lot of pictures was not an easy thing for me, even though they knew I was part of the group. Um, they all wanted to know, like, what it was for and where it was going, and it's important um, that to consider. Oh, oh. All right. All right. So that's the number. So they had a newsletter. It was called, it's called The Guys. It was weekly. Um, and before I had sort of like uh, uh, taking it on, it was really quite boring. But uh, I figured maybe I could try to like add some, some flavor to it. So I, and this was all sort of done in the vein of, um, uh, of like a, a skim or a blavity, right? So it's all about their community. Um, but like with some fun and some humor. So bosom buddies and be a volunteer, right? Um, if you need a gym bud, here was a great article about fitness tips for people living with HIV. And of course, everyone's looking for a date. So like, what, <laughs> how, what's, you know, what are some of the hindrances to that? And they also had decided to start a single of the week, which actually became a, a single of the month, a catch of the month. Uh, and I was sort of helping them put together. So m much of my work sort of uh, revolved around creating content just for them to share in their Facebook group. Um, and it was fun. Let's see if this will play. Yes. Okay, yeah, so uh, other things that I worked on was trying to revolve around um, what kind of content we could we create, what kind of stories could we tell that would like respect everyone's anonymity. So I immediately thought of Tumblr and created six word stories and it was a page meant for them to go and sort of share their experiences uh, and how HIV has impacted their lives. It could be about when someone, you had disclosed to someone and uh, they surprised you with their response or like who was your nemesis at the job or you know, uh, what was your last date like? Um, just ways to sort of think, have them think creatively to create a space where they could all go to um, and share. Also too, the organization was trying to become a 501c3, so really a lot of the work they wanted me to do with them was to help them with outreach materials. So it was not glamorous or sexy stuff, but you know, I made uh, business cards and po postcards and things, 
and a, an extensive list of where they could find other com community members, potential community members. So at a lot of service providers around the city going there and, and crashing events and saying, hey, like you guys should come out to here and have drinks, and it's fun. Um, so we're slowly growing their, their participation. And I should have a slide here, but I don't know why there's not. Oh, yeah, OK. Yeah, here are some of these. I'm way over, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, some of them got kind of nasty, and I was like, whoa. Not nasty, but you know, provocative. So going forward, I'm gonna help them gain new members, build out the newsletter, more matchmaking, and reaching out to thought leaders and public figures within the movement, and sort of get more stories that are, out are outward facing eventually, maybe in the next year. Um, so thank you, everyone.